Welcome back to MicromiApartment.com. Today we're cooking a pork shoulder roast. Got a great deal at uh, No Frills and I got 30% off. I know, looks pretty big for one lonely dude in a single apartment. So what I've decided to do with this, because it was such a great deal, is uh, slow cook it and make some pulled pork sandwiches. Then I'm going to portion the pulled pork put it in the freezer, then I have some great sandwich meat anytime I want afterward. Tough thing about today though is that I got called into work. I wasn't scheduled to work, somebody else called in sick, and of course they call me and I have to say yes. So that's a little shitty for me, but hey, it's great for my ex-wife, she's making more money. Uh, so I'm going to slow cook this. I've actually turned this thing on already. This is a slow cooker, and I don't really use it often, but this is the perfect scenario to use a slow cooker. This is going to cook for like five or six hours in there and it's slow cooking which means it sort of cooks in its own moisture the meat is going to be super tender when i come home from work and then we'll just pull it apart for the pulled pork so let's get started on that basically i've turned this on i've set it at six hours to run at six hours and these things take a long time to heat up so i have it on here already the pieces of pork that provide the most flavor are the ones with the most muscle tissue so you're looking for hip legs, uh, shoulders, which is what this one is. And the bone inside and the fat surrounding this is going to give the meat some excellent flavor. And because I'm slow cooking it, all of that has a chance to sort of cook together, just marry together for hours. And by the time we're done, we're going to trim out everything except the meat. And we're going to have some really tasty, zesty uh, pulled pork sandwiches. For seasoning, you don't really need much. All I'm going to do here basically is rub a little bit of oil on the bottom of my crock pot. Uh, the pork itself, because it's taking so long to cook, is going to provide 90% of the flavor. So you can add onions, garlic, celery, any type of mirepoix, even bay leaves if you like. But really I'm just going to keep it very basic here. I'm going to be using beef stock, a bit of wine, onion, and a great flavor ingredient to get this roast started. Montreal steak spice. Okay, so first things first, let's get this pork roast right into the bottom. Now if you don't have onions or garlic or anything in your fridge, don't even worry about it. The meat itself is going to do all the work for you in terms of flavor, so don't worry if you don't have any of these aromatics uh, on hand. You can basically do this with nothing. Alright, so here goes my Montreal steak spice as well. You could get fancy and rub this in, but I gotta go to work, so I'm just gonna get this started and get the hell out of here. Now, uh, beef base or chicken base. I don't have any fresh stuff on hand, so I'm going to be using a powdered base. And actually, I love using this wonton soup base. It's got a bit of a beef and pork flavor to it already. So instead of beef powder base, I'm going to be using that. I just want to make sure that that's dissolved so that powder doesn't sit at the bottom. Now, I've boiled a full kettle of water here. And I'm going to just dissolve that. Now, let's just pour it into the crock pot. I want to save a little bit of room. We'll add some wine here as well. I got some dying red wine. Let's just give that a little bit of sweet love to it. And guys, let me tell you, in order to burn something in a crock pot, you have to be on vacation for a week in Florida. These things cook super slow. So I'm going to come back here after my shift this is going to turn off automatically and it just sort of sit there. So when I do get back, we'll process it and I'll show you what I do to make a great pulled pork sandwich. Okay, so... Stayed at work a little bit longer than I thought. Let's have a look at this. Of course that's off. So this has been sitting here, I assume for a couple hours anyway. So a couple of things that I want to look at here. One of them being how the meat is separated from the bone. So. Oh my god. So this has actually worked out well. So I don't know if you can see this, but the bone, look at that. The bone is sort of separating completely from the meat. So I know it's fully cooked and it's tender. But because we're making pulled pork, I'm going to be looking for a stringy nature to the meat and if I can flake it off. So let's just see that. Oh, that works out as well too. So let me show you this a bit closer. Got a piece of the meat here. What I'm, we're going to be doing here is pulling the part, pulling the pork apart like this. Look at that. 
That is the essence of pulled pork right there. And that's exactly what we want with that stringy nature. So I'm going to let this completely cool off here right now by pulling the meat out of the sauce. But you know what? I just got home, so I'm going to go change and uh, we'll come back and deal with that whole process in just a couple minutes. Be right back. First things first. Okay. Let's slide this over here. All right. Let's pull this out, gently as we can. It wants to fall apart. That's pretty cool. All right, fat side down. Okay, so basically what we want to do here is remove parts that we aren't going to be using. Uh, you want to be doing this with a fork, like so, and taking the meat off. Just piece by piece, grain by grain, and we're separating the real meat from the stuff that we don't want. Like I said, the stringy nature to the pork is kind of what makes this a very interesting texture uh, to eat in sandwiches. Okay, so let me finish pulling the rest of this pork and we'll come back and we'll add some barbecue sauce to this. So, all you have to do now is basically add your favorite bar bar ooh, camera fall. Jesus. That was a close one. Okay, so now all you want to be doing is adding your favorite type of barbecue sauce to this. So, whatever flavor you like, that's what's going to go in it. Any kind of barbecue sauce is going to make uh, for some great tasting pulled pork sandwiches. Uh, I have a little bit of this uh, bullseye left, so I'm going to use the rest of that up. And then I'm just going to use this Kraft barbecue sauce. This is pretty good sauce in itself, too. Whoa, smells nice. Okay, so let's top it up with this. You probably need, you know, close to a cup. You want every piece of meat to sort of be, you know, bathed in that barbecue sauce, so... believe how good that goes with that beer. I'm going to put that in the fridge for tonight because my daughter's coming over for lunch tomorrow. We'll finish that up tomorrow. And I got massive Kaisers for these. Oh, they're really fresh. Mix them out. That's just so that I make, uh, make sure it doesn't get too dry in the microwave. Pork sandwiches. That's a great part to be here. Part is very mild, light. Okay, so that's ready. Just gonna top it off here. A few green onions. And that is your pulled pork sandwich. You know, that fresh bun out of the oven really makes a difference. The bun is really light and crispy. I can taste the sweet barbecue sauce as well, but the meat and the onions, even the green onions on top, everything's there together. What a beautiful combination. Guys, pulled pork sandwiches, it's not hard to do, even if you got a little crappy kitchen like I do. And like I said, you make a big batch, freeze it up. I'm going to put mine in uh, the rest of this meat. The rest of this meat, I'm going to put mine in these little pouches. I'm going to freeze five or six of them, stick them in the freezer, and then I can pull them out anytime. Just drop them in a pan with hot water, and you've got some pulled pork ready to go. All right, dudes, thanks for dropping by. Pulled pork sandwiches.
I got another one that keeps me 